Was 2015 the year of stuck for you, where you just thought you were gonna to get to your goals and you didn't? Well, if so, stay tuned. This is a special edition of As a Matter of Fact. And it really goes to prove that if you don't measure something, nothing will be done about it. And we have to make New Jersey's business climate more attractive for entrepreneurs. We are Wonder Women. Like, look at all these women and what they've done and what they've tried. And even if they didn't succeed, they gave it a shot. I don't think it's fair to put a four or five billion dollar price tag on middle class New Jerseyans. We've got a great lifestyle here and I don't want to see it ruined because politicians can't manage our finances properly. Hi, I'm Lisa Allen and this is a special edition of As a Matter of Fact. We're filming for Hometown, but today we're in this beautiful courtyard the Summit Arboretum, where we're gonna talk about getting unstuck. It's a place where you can gather your thoughts and think about what's ahead. There's so many times in life where there's people that know they have passion, they know they have a talent, but they don't really know how to connect the resources together. And today I have a special guest who's gonna help us with all of that. She's a trailblazer, she's been building an empire, she's been crisscrossing the United States to find success stories just for you and I to talk about how do you get your get to your goals, connect your passion, and get the resources to make your life the best life possible. Today, I'm gonna to introduce you to Kathleen Smith. She's a former prosecutor, mother of three children, two in high school, one in college, and she's the founder and CEO of Morph Mom. It's not just a business that sounds like Morph Mom, it's more than that, she connects moms, she connects men, she connects women, she connects people on a multimedia platform that inspires people to look, to re-engage, embark on their new pursuits in business, the arts, philanthropy, and beyond. I want to welcome you, Kathleen Smith. Thank Thanks. you so much for having me today. This is so exciting and what a beautiful setting to be sitting here with you. Isn't it? Beautiful. You know, I've come here so many times to just think because I think sometimes in the clutter of life, and you have all these, the phone calls, the emails, the texting, you come here, you sit, and you just unwind, right? It's stunning, and, and for those of you looking into, you can't even imagine how blue the sky is and just how amazing it is right now. Yeah, so today we're gonna talk about Morph Mom, but I really actually wanna back up a little bit before we dive into that, because behind every amazing company is the person who started it. And you are a mom, you're a philanthropist, and you're a wife, you have many titles, but beneath it all, you're Kathleen Smith, right? And I want, I want the audience to know your story and what propelled you to start Morph Mom. Well, I appreciate you saying amazing, and I, I really, it means a lot to me that you just said that. Um, I hope it is helping people, and that's my goal. Um, so basically, my story is I was a prosecutor in Hudson County, I'm from Jersey City originally, um, and I went back after law school with the intention of staying there forever. I was never gonna leave, uh, but life happens. Mm -hmm. And um, I worked through my first child, my second child came and it was a little bit too much. And at the time, um, it was a little dangerous. <laughs> it was getting a little gamey with, with my kids and where I was, I lived very close to the courthouse and it was a little bit too much. It was time to back away for a little bit. But I always had the intention of going back. So 14 years later, <laughs> which mm -hmm. it happened really, really quickly, I thought, okay, I'm back. They're, of course they're going to want me back. And that was not exactly the case. I kind of walked in thinking, Here's, where's my desk? And they were thinking, you shouldn't have had a desk in the first place. <laughs> and Why are you back here? <laughs> so I thought, okay, hmm, plan B. Now what? But that was the frustrating thing was, what is plan B? All I knew was law. All I ever thought was, well, I'm definitely going back. I loved working with juveniles. I loved the entire thing. Never even considered there was something else. So I was thinking about it. And I had, at that time, I had three kids. And what else can I do? Like I knew law and I wasn't terribly good at it to begin with, but where do I start and find something new? Yeah. Because even so, though you have the skill, over time, over 14 years, you're just not gonna stay, it's not gonna be no. sharpened. Right? No, and especially, and those that, with, with law, you have to continue with continuing legal education classes every year. And they're expensive, and the thought of studying and having, I, I couldn't do it. So on top of wanting to go back, I was gonna have to make up for all these years that I'd let go. So that was very intimidating as well. Um, the entire thing was really scary. And then all of a sudden you started to think, wow, I don't really have the confidence I thought I did. And 
I don't have any connections anymore and I don't know who I am anymore. If that was gone and I always thought I was going back to that, I'm not sure where I fit mm -hmm. anymore. So I, I wasn't really sure where to turn. And I thought, okay, I'm gonna give something a shot. I was an English major in school. I've read a million children's books to my kids. I'll write a book. <laughs> well, I wrote a book in 24 hours. So imagine the masterpiece that I came up with in 24 <laughs> hours. It was uh. horrific, but just, like pen to paper and doing something and feeling like I was re-engaged again. I was creating something. It was so exciting. exciting. It was horrific. It was terrible, uh, but it felt good doing it. So I thought, all right, I'm going to try and self-publish this. And first of all, I'm not going to tell anybody I'm doing this because I know they're going to look at me and say, you're not a writer. Who do you think you are? Mm. So, you know, from the darkness at night, I would sit behind a computer and say, how does one self-publish? How does one do something without anybody else knowing what you're doing? And never thinking it was going to go anywhere, but if I could print one copy and give it to my mother for Mother's Day, I'd be like, yes, it's a success. Of course, it didn't happen. This is what 14 years yes, has led 14 to. 14 years I have written yeah. this masterpiece in 24 hours. It was so bad. But anyway, so then I'm online. I'm looking like, how do you self-publish? And I'm in 70,000 different websites, and I can't get an answer. And then I'm stuck on a page, and I thought maybe I thought something helpful. Four sites back. How do you get back there? And this whole process was so... Frustrating. frustrating and I didn't know what I was doing and I was thinking wait why am I doing this why am I even trying and it kind of puts you back where you were so the final blow was when I finally told a friend of mine a friend of mine for a long long time and I said it kind of slipped out I didn't intentionally tell her and as the words came out I was trying to push it back in really quickly and I said so I'm I, I wrote this children's book and as I'm saying it I'm like no why'd I do it and she looked at me and this is a very good friend of mine and she this is what she did not a word she did this Oh. Uh, and she walked away. <laughs> okay, that Ouch. was not the most positive response. <laughs> not exactly what I was expecting. And it was a real blow because on top of not having the confidence and, and not feeling, you know, not sure where to, what direction to take, right. the thought of not having the support of a friend on top of it, it was just a kick in the stomach. And you tell your kids constantly, you know, it doesn't matter what other people think, you forge ahead. It, it was, it was hard. Difficult. It was really hard. You know, I like to think that moms have this monopoly on being stuck um, because being home for a long period of time, you're not sharpening your skills, you're starting to feel like you're disconnected from the world, and even though you're volunteering, you're doing all these really great things, you begin to say, you know what, this is not, this is not all I got, right? This right. is not all I have. I have a lot of talents to share in, at some point. <clears throat> Excuse me. And therefore, what was born? Morph Mom. Morph Mom. So what right? happened was, when I sort of got shot down with the eye roll in the eye, yeah. I had to take a couple days to get my yeah, lick the self back together. Yeah. And I thought, wait a minute, why am I reinventing the wheel? There are so many women out there who have done whatever it is they wanted to do. And I don't care what it is. It could be going to school. It could be starting a company. It could be writing a book. It could be taking classes. It could be, you name it. It doesn't matter what it is, but they've gone out and done it. And I'm sure, and I was, sure, well, I was hoping mm -hmm. that they would be willing in turn to spread their kindness, to pay it forward. And in turn, rather than us all trying to scramble and say what's out there, let that be the resource to see what they've done, how they did it, steps that they took, what worked, what didn't work. Was anyone doing this at the time that you were thinking about? Not that mm -hmm. I know of. And again, my skills on the internet were not tremendously <laughs> strong. So <laughs> there, there may have been, I might have missed it, right. but I, I, I don't think so yeah. and I felt very strongly about going and doing the video in person because I was very lonely during this whole thing yeah. and I thought if I could go sit and talk to somebody and share that with other people they would sort of feel a part of the group you're getting reconnected and rather than the eye roll aside this is now a community of women who are saying you know what I did it something worked something didn't work but I'm gonna pay it forward and share my wisdom my knowledge my experience with you right. so that's how this sort of started and again I had no idea how to start a website, mm -hmm. no idea how to do any of this, but I just bought a camera and I and kind started. of did it. <laughs> yeah. And you told me that you, when you decided to do it, you picked up and you flew across the country. So you started in California. I did. I got as far away from New Jersey as I could <laughs> only because right. the eye roll on the side was still a little <laughs> raw, <laughs> still raw. Yeah. And I thought no one around here can know that I'm doing this because mm -hmm. they are literally, I, I thought I've got a little bit of momentum and if I run into one more person who tells me I can't do it, mm. I'm going to stop. Right. So I need to go somewhere where nobody knows me, nobody knows what I'm doing and I'm just, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Right. But I contacted identical twins that I'd gone to high school with that I'd not spoken with in, now I'm going to reveal my age, many decades. And I said, they were both doing really exciting things out in California. And I said, here's what I want to do. 
And these are the things I want to cover. I want to share women's stories. I want to pay it forward with those stories. I want to share what's good, what's bad, specific steps. So if I'm watching this tonight, I can write down three steps and tomorrow morning I have no reason to get not to start because I have three steps in hand. Mm-hmm. And I said, and I also want a little bit of kindness. Like, you know, that's all I require. I don't care what your story is. I don't care what you've done. As long as it's going to help somebody, that's all I ask. So I went to Best Buy. I bought a camera and a tripod, which, by the way, four years later, still has a tag on it. And I still can't get it to work at, ever. It always <laughs> falls down every single time. 600 interviews later. And I said, I'm coming. I and love that you can admit that, actually. Oh, admit it. People are like, um, <laughs> That's the epitome of vulnerability. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I'm sure they're questioning my experience. You're like, uh, can I help you with that? <laughs> like, no, it's okay. I'll, it works eventually. Um, so I got on a plane and I flew out there and I thought it was going to be two interviews. And uh, my goal was always within 24 hours to get back mm-hmm. so that I wasn't leaving, you know, because I still had kids at home and I didn't have any help. So I had to get back as soon as I could. And there's only so much cereal they could have for dinner. So I got on the plane and I landed and they said, how long do you have? And I said, oh, I'm on a, you know, a flight back tonight. They had lined up 12 more women who had heard about it and said they wanted to be a part of this. So that's sort of how it started. So it's really very much word of mouth. That is incredible. And it's all over the country that way. Right. And so we've gone from scrapping together a website, buying a camera that you didn't know how to use, and 600 interviews later. Um, what I found really fascinating about your interviews, because I went to the website, you're not in any of them. No, and that's best for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yes, trust me. <laughs> yeah. No, because as I was saying, I, it's, I'm not the story. Mm-hmm. I'm sort of the conduit to get the stories out there. And that's why hopefully people feel more fun is helping people because these women are coming out of, I mean, I travel the entire country and people want to share their stories and give of their time and share. And so it's not me, it's about these women. So it's better that way. Yeah, yeah. I think that's really unique because most people want to try and intervene and be a part of that process. So the, you, you're really the driver of the process. You let people find their voice and share and help others. I think that's an incredible support. And the other thing is, is um, I want you to talk about what have you developed within Morph Mom besides the interviews that has made the company so successful? So originally, as I said, it was a website. And the goal, um, and I also want to mention too the name that people, you know, it's, people get confused with the name. So Morph Mom, when I started this four years ago, I was a mom looking to figure out how to get back into the workplace. And it was very specific to my situation at the time. But as it grew and women were contacting me from around the country and they'd say, you know, I'm not a mom, but my story really helps. Or I'd have women saying, I never left the workforce, but I still can give a story that can help somebody looking to do something. Mm-hmm. So it has, that's the biggest thing I think it in and of itself has morphed. So I will tell any woman's story from anywhere, it doesn't matter, as long as I said, you know, they're kind of paying it forward and sharing something and helping to connect with somebody else. Um, so originally, again, the website was videos, mm-hmm. and then we have sort of like a mini network within. Many of these women, like I said, I didn't want to tell anyone I was writing a book. So how do you get it out there on Facebook or something very public? So within Morph Mom, you can connect with any other member and ask to friend them, and it's all very private. So let's say I watched your video about sh- writing a book, and you gave three steps, but I needed the fourth step. I could connect with you directly through Morph Mom, mm-hmm. very private. We don't give our personal emails right. and I could ask you for the fourth step. So it was the videos, it was connecting within the site um, and it was originally saying I'm looking for women to do this or I'm a woman looking for this position. Right. Right. That has also since morphed as well. Um, uh, that was the first year of the website. But what I found was the website was enough for some and the video but some needed a little bit more of a connection mm-hmm. as well. So we started doing cocktail parties because people needed the human interaction. So I was traveling around the country anyway, so when I go to do my interviews, that night we'd host a cocktail party. And at the cocktail party, it would either honor one Morph Mom or a Morph Mom idea or a charity or really anything, getting women together to connect. And we felt very strongly about whoever the speaker was, the speaker would speak for 10 minutes on this, you know, not on a stage, and then we open it up to the whole room. So you really are sharing and connecting. It's not just about going to watch someone, it's about being brought into this community. Right. So we like to think there's sort of a little Morph Mom army around the country that's growing. And then I started to write for Huffington Post. So there's a Morph Mom, it's under my name, Kath- Kathleen Smith, but tell stories about all these women around the country. And I now have a radio show every Thursday night. That it's is very, so very exciting. fun. So much fun. Yeah. And it's now a podcast on iTunes as well. Excellent. And it's just about sharing these stories. Mm-hmm. And then we started classes. Yeah. 
Um, and we have two varying classes um, and two local women as well, Lisa Berkery and Breen Weston have been helping me with this. And one is called a Morph Mom Masterclass. Mm -hmm. And that's for women who sort of have an idea already, have a business and le need a little bit of help. And we have um, retired CEOs who were not really ready to call it quits, they still wanted to be a part of something, engaged with us. We like to call it a fish tank. And they mm -hmm. come and help mentor these women. Okay. And then we have another class called, hmm, what do I do next? For those who were like me that day when they said, you're not coming back to the prosecutor's office, and you think, well, where do I start? Right. And um, that's more focused for kind of finding out what your passion is and getting re-engaged. Getting started. So I love all this. We actually have to take a break. Um, and when we come back, we're going to talk to someone who's been participating in those master classes and really getting her life going. So we will be back in just a few short seconds. Thank you. Welcome back, I'm Lisa Allen and this is As A Matter Of Fact. We're here in the beautiful Summit Arboretum and I am joined with my guest, Kathleen Smith, who is uh, founder and CEO of Morph Mom. And we have Beth Breyer, who is joining us, who is a hometown board member and Summit Mom. And the reason why we met is through Beth, because Beth said that you were incredible. Actually, I meant to tell you, three times is a charm. I've had three people mention you, that I had to meet you, and when Beth finally said it, I said, that's it, I'm meeting this woman. And only three? <laughs> only, I know, I know, well, I And were they the all hint. positive? <laughs> I took the hint, yes, everybody said you were amazing. So, Beth said, we have to get together, we need, I need to introduce you to Kathleen, because you were going through the master program that yes, Kathleen had mentioned. Um, you were, you have your own dreams, I'm gonna let you tell the story, and talk about how you guys met. Okay, well, first of all, hello, Lisa, hello, Kathleen, this is great. This is a continuation of the coffee we had in town the other day. Mm -hmm. And we had a wonderful time. So I came to meet Kathleen early last winter through a friend of ours, Roxanne Richards. During a blizzard. During a blizzard. <laughs> throw that in. <laughs> so I had, I, like Kathleen, I was also an attorney and I was practicing for 14 or 15 years. And through a confluence of events, I found myself no longer practicing. And I found myself at home doing a lot of laundry and telling people I was in the textile business. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds familiar. Yeah. And I, I was raising my children, getting more involved in the community and taking care of us all. But in the back of my mind, I always wanted to write a TV pilot. And like Kathleen, I thought, well, who am I to write a TV pilot? I did not study this. I don't know anything about it. But I love, tel I love TV, I love television. So I started working on a pilot and I didn't want to tell anybody. I didn't tell a soul. I didn't even tell my husband or my children. And they would come home and I would slap the computer shut. And I'm sure they thought I was looking at porn or something else or shopping <laughs> online. And I would close the computer and I didn't want to say anything. And for some reason, I decided I, I have got to set a goal. I've either got to finish this pilot and tell people about it or move off of this idea. So I met Kathleen and she started telling me about this thing called a master class. And I said, well, I don't have an idea, but I, I don't have a product to bring. I have an idea. And she said, sure, bring your, bring your teaser from your pilot. So all I had was a teaser at that point. And I had a lot of ideas in my head. So I meet Kathleen and she picks me up. She agrees <laughs> to drive me to her, into the city to be on her radio show and, uh, and go to the master class. So it is, there are two things I hate. I hate darkness. And I hate snow. And it's 6 a.m. on a weekday, and it's snowing like crazy, and it's still dark because it's February. And my husband goes, where are you going? And I, that's right, we were going to the master class, and I said, I'm, I'm going on the radio show with my friend Kathleen, the one I told you about. And he's thinking, this is the same woman who's shutting her computer, and she's standing <laughs> in, the, in the snowstorm. And Kathleen comes in your big car, and we drive into the city to the master class. A life-changing experience. What does she had? You had four or five other women there who brought products or ideas, and they were so inspiring. And I thought to myself, what am I doing here with these amazing, talented women? Isn't that was, isn't that the way that we talk to ourselves? What am I doing here? The audacity. What right do I have? Right. Yeah. Right. right. Who do I think I am? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I'm thinking, all right, but we came in all this distance in the snow. <laughs> I, I got to keep moving forward. And, and I was listening to these other women's ideas, thinking, yes, go for it, go for it. And then I I passed out um, some vi video, some 
mimeographs, that, that dates me, not mimeographs, <laughs> photocopies of my, of the teaser from my, of my script. And it was, I didn't even have a name for it then. But so I'm writing this TV pilot and I give it to everybody in the master class. They read it and they go, you have to write this. And all of a sudden I said, yes, I have to write this. And I gave myself a hundred days to write my TV pilot. Incredible. And, and did you do it? I did it in much less than a hundred days. Wow. And then the hard part really started and that's marketing and trying to sell it. Mm -hmm. So it's, but it's been very inspiring. And as much as I truly, truly want to sell it and see it out there, if I don't, I know that I'm an excellent company with 99.99% of writers. Yeah. You know, I think it's really interesting, your story, because you hear that over and over again with women that, and men. I, you know, this is, again, moms don't monopolize this market, but I feel like it's a common theme with us where we feel like we don't have the skill, we don't, no longer are we marketable, and we get stuck in this self-talk. And so we finally get over that hump, um, and that's why more, where Morph Mom comes in, and there's going to be dark days ahead, right? And we have to learn how to deal with those obstacles. And what I find so fascinating about your business and your company and how you deal with the interviews and, um, and the people that you meet is you're giving people a roadmap that helps them through those dark days, those obstacles. I, I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. And especially, and maybe it's because my own personal experience is I screw up all the time, so I'm pretty used to it. But I hope that they realize like that's sort of the fun part because you've tried yeah. and sometimes it hurts a lot more than others but at least it shows that you're out there and you're giving it a shot and that all these other people you know like Beth was saying they had all these great ideas Beth's idea was amazing she walked in and everyone in the room was just with their jaws dropped listening to this idea and they couldn't even believe what was what she was presenting to them uh, that it, it was so was energizing and you talk about failure so um, just two weeks ago I got a big no from Amazon but they, they heard me and they responded and I thought okay it's a big no but <laughs> but it's some it's a voice out there exactly. that said okay we took a look we don't like it <laughs> and, I always, and I always say you know what Einstein had a thousand no's mm -hmm. right yep. so right. it's just a matter of having the perseverance and being able to come up, overcome that emotional piece of it right so I have a question for you if you had a superhero who would it be you know who I would say um, and it's because of one of the Morph Moms I actually interviewed down in North Carolina, in, in Atlanta. And her husband was a painter, and he had painted Wonder Woman. We were sitting in her room, and it's Cinda B bags, and she created these great bags. And we're sitting there, and behind her is an enormous portrait of Wonder Woman behind her. And I can't stop looking at this portrait. It's really cool, and it's hand-drawn, and, and all over it are phrases that she has said. Mm -hmm. So I had to ask her during the interview, I said, I, not that I'm not completely paying attention to everything we were saying, but this is the coolest portrait I've ever seen of Wonder Woman. And he said that his mother, his, her husband, had painted it for her because he felt she was a Wonder Woman. She was an amazing mother. She was an amazing person. And she was out there trying to do all of this stuff. And what worked and worked, what didn't work, didn't work. But it was Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. So I've always kind of thought about Wonder Woman behind her head. I guess I'd yeah. go with that. But I think I'd see Wonder Woman purely because of this portrait mm -hmm. behind this woman. And it actually, as I was interviewing her, and I'm looking at Wonder Woman for all she stands for, I'm thinking, we are Wonder Women. Like, look at all these women and what they've done and what they've tried. And even if they didn't succeed, they gave it a shot. Mm -hmm. And they're raising great families. And even if they're not raising families, they're women who are out there helping other people. And we are. I think it would be, that's what, I think that's what it would be. Yeah. And I wish I could look like that in that outfit. I <laughs> of, it. of course. And I do like a good cuff. I like how she throws it. <laughs> um, so back to you really quickly. If um, there's anything that you have learned in this journey, Beth, in terms of working with Morph Mom, what would that be? You know, how important it is to network and talk with people who have been through the process. As you said, when you start anything new, even if you did have all the proper education and background, once you're out there and you're practicing, you really don't know where to turn. And to not talk to people, it's a huge waste of resources and your own time. And the insight people will give you and the support that people will give you. You can't get that any other way but by getting out and talking to people who have done it. And that's, I think, the strength of Morph Moms is the network, is the support that it provides. Mm -hmm. and, and we've started this new thing as of late. Um, a good friend of mine, Sheila Clem, has actually come up with this idea where all the Morph Mom things, were Morph Mom events and coming to it. So we've now started something called Morph Mom Goes To and, like, and we will support other endeavors mm -hmm. as well. So as an army, 
we can bring we can come together to support one another, but at the same time not limit it to that. So we're now branching out and supporting other causes. Oh, I love as that. Well. That's, That's amazing. amazing. Um, yeah. Which is really exciting too, really yeah. fun. We just did a big event with Maria Shriver in the city, oh my God. and. I, and I'm very disorganized. That's part of the problem. So, <laughs> well, I'm a time management coach. Yes. I can help you. With that. <laughs> so, the good news is we just changed two of the pages on Morphum, so you'll know when the events are and when their classes are, and you can RSVP. And that's coming out this week. But up until then, it was sort of like sending an email the night before. So, you busy tomorrow morning? <laughs> We're gonna have it tomorrow. So be ready. I'm picking you up in a blizzard. <laughs> but um, true. so this idea was sort of. Um, last minute but Maria Shriver had a move for minds event for Alzheimer's mm -hmm. and I put the call out and women jumped on it like yeah we want help we want to do it and we had the biggest showing at this Maria Shriver event in the city where Hoda Cobb was the MC. but I just think once again it's not me it's not Morph Mom it's these women who just are ready to help others and pay it forward and to mentor and who want to be who want to be helped it's an incredible story it really is and how do people find you so uh, morphmom.com is the website. It's M-O-R-P-H-M-O-M.com. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You can get through to me through the website. Um, you can email me through that, and you can also find out about the classes, the events. We have a lot of events coming up in, this, uh, in the fall. In September, we have a huge military one out in L.A., and we're going to have a big one in New Jersey as well. Excellent. And we'll list what's coming. And if you have suggestions, if you have ideas, if you want to promote what you're doing, I'd love for you to contact me. I will travel to you wherever you are. We do the interview, it takes 10 minutes, it's really quick. Uh, there's no pressure at all. Um, and then for the radio show, we're on Thursday nights, but you can find about that on Facebook. If you go to Facebook, Morph Mom, Instagram, Morph Mom, Twitter, I think is Morph Mom, <laughs> I'm not sure. I'd go with that theme though, look up Morph Mom. Excellent. And for Huffington Post, um, you can look up yeah. Kathleen Smith to hear just these amazing stories of these amazing women. And by the way, I'm sitting here with two amazing Morph Moms. Yeah. I mean, look how lucky Thank I am. You. Well, thank you so much. This has been an incredible journey. I feel like we could be here for a whole nother, <laughs> another two hours yes, please. talking about this. And so we'll have you back. Thank and you. Um, thank you. Thank and I you can't for thank sharing. you enough for yeah. letting me share the story and for Beth taking a risk and coming on into the first Morph Mom class, yeah, the master so class. Exciting. And for Lisa allowing you allowing me to share this as Absolutely. well. Um, I love what you guys do. I think Hometown TV is amazing. Mm. And um, anything, anything goes. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So we have to cut it short, unfortunately, but we hope you enjoyed today's segment. It's all about passion. This year, make it your year. You do not have to sit on the sidelines anymore. There's a resource for you. Decide what your goals are, connect with the resources, and you can do it through Morph Mom. In order to find us, you can look us up on hometown.org. You can find us on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next month. Bye-bye.